Hi everybody, in this video we're gonna build a 3D model of this really nice World War II era propeller blade. The goal is to eventually run an aerodynamic simulation on Airshaper to analyze its aerodynamic performance in terms of thrust, power and so on. But first, a little bit of history on this propeller blade. I was walking around in Ghent, really nice city in Belgium, way nicer than Brussels, skip Brussels, and I saw this one standing and it was so nice, really nice piece of wood and it had these uh, this logo at the top, at the front here. Um, it says Erco uh, in Riverdale, Maryland. It's by the Engineering Research Corporation and after some research it turns out that they actually built these. They're probably being used on trainer aircraft around the World War II era. Now, this is really nice, just a piece of impregnated wood, which they used to replace aluminum propellers, propellers because aluminum was hard to find. Now, at the front, you can see that there's this, this brass protection layer um, on top of the wood. Sorry if I'm panting, this thing is really heavy and I'm just really weak. So we have this brass protection cover here at the leading edge. Um, and you can also really see the nice twist on this blade. So at the root, um, the angle of attack is very different compared to the angle of attack at the tip of the blade. And that's normal because at the tip of the blade, the blade is spinning much faster. So combined with the incoming wind angle um, on the aircraft, because the aircraft is flying forward, you need a different angle of attack to still get the right lifting properties and the forward thrust. Now, I'm going to put this down. I'm just panting the whole time. So actually, to build a 3D model, uh, we've been working together with Superfast Matt, really nice guy, super cool channel, check it out. He's been using some uh, different 3D scanners to scan motor components and so on. We wanted to do the same, but then we saw he needed a pretty heavy GPU, which wasn't too mobile, um, and so on. So we decided to go for photogrammetry, which is a technique where you actually put your object in a stationary position, and then you just walk around the object and take pictures from different angles. So we did that. We put the propeller at the square, uh, close to where we have the office. We took a lot of pictures and then those pictures, we put them together. So if you look at those pictures, you can actually virtually walk around the propeller blade. So this is the series of pictures that we took. So you see, we took it from different angles. And what's very important for photogrammetry is that you have enough angles and that there's a lot of texture. Now this propeller is really, really nice in terms of texture. You can really see uh, the structure of the wood appearing there. So there's enough detail for the different images to be stitched together. Now then we used a free software called Zephyr. I don't know if that pronounced, pronounced that right, but in that software, um, now this is the output, it actually took seven hours on my cute baby laptop CPU. I don't have a GPU on this one, uh, so it took quite some time, but it worked. And you can really see how nicely the 3D model is being captured, purely based on images. So that's actually really quite incredible. Uh, so you can see the leading edge, the trailing edge. You can also really see um, the twist in the blade, which is really nice. Uh, so high angle of attack at the bottom, low angle of attack uh, at the tip here as it moves faster through the air. You can even see the inscription there. Um, you can also click on a picture just to see where it was taken and how it was used in, th in the scan. So really nice, really nice software. Next thing that we did was to import the out uh, put of this software, which is a textured mesh, into Blender. Into Blender. Uh, so in, in Blender, we had quite a lot of cleanup to do to delete all of the parts of the 3D model, like the ground of the square and so on, that are not relevant. Uh, cut that away. And then at the bottom, uh, at the hub of the blade, we had an opening. So we had to close that opening. So we stitched uh, some parts together and then exported the, the model. Um, and that was it. That's the blade that we needed. Now, to give you some insights, uh, we also have this software, uh, well, we don't have it, we use the software um, Paraview, which is open source, really nice scientific software, also for aerodynamic simulations or hydrodynamics. We uploaded or, or loaded the model into this software and made some slices at different uh, lengths of the blades um, because we want to see what the airflow sections look like. Um, so as you can see, the scan is not perfect. Uh, there's some glitches, especially around the sharp edges and so on, um, but it's really, really nice still and it serves the purpose. So you have a section at the root. So we go from red all the way to orange, yellow, and then green and bluish, which you don't see now. But if I turn this one off, you can really see the sections here. 
So what's really nice to see is that at the root, of course, you have to make the transition from a uh, circular section um, to an airfoil section. So this is kind of halfway in between. So you get this very thick uh, airfoil section and then you get this section. So this is really interesting. So you have the forward velocity. So the air is coming in like this because the airplane is moving forward, but then the blade is moving this way. So relative, there's wind coming in at this angle. So the combined angle is something like this and then the air just crosses an airfoil element. So you have this fairly flat section at the bottom, which is the pressure side of this airfoil, and then the air will actually curve around and accelerate around the top part, which is the suction side as well, and this will generate a high pressure at the bottom, which pushes the airfoil this way, and a suction effect at the top, which is actually sucking the airfoil uh, this way as well. So that's why we get the forward thrust. Now, as you move closer towards the tip um, of the blade, you can see that the profile section actually grows thinner and thinner um, in this one uh, as you go faster um, because the diameter increases. Um, and as you move towards the outer parts of the blade, of course, the cord length also reduces because this is a thinner part um, of the blade. You can still see that we have the airfoil section, but then at a different angle of attack. So this one has an angle like this all the way at the blade root. And then as you move closer towards the outer parts, the angle of attack is much lower because this horizontal component, due to the movement of the blade, is much bigger compared to the incoming airflow. So you actually have a more horizontal vector, so you need to actually twist your blade a bit. Um, so that was it for our analysis of the 3D aspect, uh, the geometry of this blade. So in the next video, which is coming up in a few weeks, um, or is out there already, if this one is, is an old video. So we will actually put this one into AirShaper to run an aerodynamic simulation just to see how this propeller blade performs for different um, uh, positions of the blade as well. So stay tuned. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked it, drop a comment. If you can think of anything else that we should actually, well, not scan, but uh, 3D eyes with uh, photogrammetry, let us know in the comments and subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.